you said you are a God who loves us and that there was no greater love than you, the almighty God, my mind cannot even fathom it, would lay your life down, Jesus, for us. My mind cannot fathom how great that love is and was, especially what they did to you. You didn't open your mouth except certain times. You gave your life willingly. And with that, we honor you. We said, worthy is the Lamb. That's why you paid the ultimate price. And we're grateful. We'll just worship Him for a moment. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We worship you. We worship you. I see somebody's ribs in the spirit. And there's been something that happened. Either they've been bruised or there's a fracture in your in your in your ribs. It has caused you pain. And if you're watching online or if you're in this room, who would that be? If there's anybody here, something with your ribs. There's one hand, somebody else. Why don't you come up here? I just want to lay my hands on you for a minute because I feel the anointing on my hands. Thank you, Lord. We worship you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, God, we honor you someone's knees even just this last week have been locking up to the point where your knee will lock and you almost fall and you're like hey this hasn't happened like this and it, and it, and it kind of frightened you because it almost made you fall it's just like your knees have been locking up God's going to lock that who is that I see in fact I see a woman where that was you this has been happening who is that is that you praise God Thank you, Lord. There's somebody online right now. You're watching me, and you're, you've been you've been scratching your head, your scalp, and it's been very itchy, and your hair is starting to fall out. And I want you to place your hand on your head right now. Just do this, and I'm going to do it standing right here. And I command that itchy scalp rash, hair loss, to stop now in the authority of Yeshua's name. And I speak healing and wholeness right now in the name of Yeshua. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's a woman that's watching right now, and your, your infant has been sick. And there is a, I see a diaper bag literally right next to where I'm speaking right now, but where you're at. And there is a, I guess where they call it, a onesie? Yeah, a onesie. It's a onesie. Take that onesie out right now and put it in your hands. And I release an anointing into that onesie right now. And I want you to go in and change that child's garments. Do it now. Don't even think about it because the anointing is going to break that sickness right now. Do it now. Do it now in the name of Yeshua. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I worship you. I worship you and I bless you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We worship you. I don't know why I keep seeing someone's throat. And there's a there's a knot or something right down in your throat. In fact, you kind of felt it and you've had a little discomfort. It's, it's I don't know what it is. It's like a bump. And I can feel it like right here in the spirit realm. Come on, who are you? You're in this room. And you notice it here just over the last few days I want to pray for you raise your hand who is that all right come on up here very quickly because that thing is going to be gone it's not anything to be concerned about thank you Lord we worship you we worship you we worship you thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord I can't even believe I'm gonna call this one up how are you we'll pray for you 
there's somebody watching me, you just, and, and again, all jokes aside, but you lost your cat. In other words, lost, not like lost, like it's missing, it died. And you are absolutely been upset. You haven't been wanting to do anything. And, and listen, that's a very difficult thing to, to have happen. And I, and I always make a joke, you know, cats don't go to heaven, dogs do, but I believe your cat's there probably maybe that and maybe a few lions but and I'm making you laugh on purpose hopefully because you've been really carrying this even where your husband's been very concerned like hey honey you can't keep on like this so I release from you right now and I speak that sense of pain loss grieving come on listen it's important to God it's important to you it's important to God I command that to come off of you right now in the name of Yeshua and I say today begins a new day in the name of Yeshua I speak and demand every demon come off loose that one right now that lady in Jesus name now Lord God of hosts I sp huh? is there somebody online I mean all, all jokes aside I'm serious I mean my heart has such compassion for you it's not easy So just take a deep breath. No more. Come on. Today's a new day. You need to say it. Look at my eyes. To, to say it with me. Yes. Today is a new day. This is released from my soul. Man, I can feel that. Amen. Sure, the importance of our Bible. How many of you brought your Bible that you're really? All right. There you go. I want to encourage everybody. Bring a hard copy of your Bible. Bring your Bible. Let's, let's not let apps and phones and all that rule our lives somewhere you got to take a break from this thing okay and uh, bring a actual bible it'll help you grow i tell you your spiritual walk will go to a whole nother level if you will spend more time in in the book rather than just apps now when i study i have my phone i have my computer and i look up different verses and things like that but i'm talking about put your nose in the book okay so um all right brenda left her glasses here and her phone thank you son that is very good. Aren't you glad for text messages and stuff? <laughs> Hold on, I'm going to text you back. Give this to your mom. I love you. Now I'm going to put a heart, Brenda. And then I'm going to put my lunch order. So you can put that in. <laughs> All right, no, anyway. Okay. So, you know, I, so I really sought the Lord, and I really feel like what He wanted me to do, and I've preached this message off and on over the last few years, but I've really been studying. And I started thinking about what is society's missing element? Obviously, God. What is the church's missing element? Obviously, God. But I began to look a little closer, and I started thinking to myself, okay, let's look at the journey of where the earth has been really since 2020. It's been a very interesting season. I don't think I've ever seen the harshness that God prophesied in 2018 and 19 that was coming in the decade, I had no idea that it was going to be this level of harshness. But as I start looking at everything that's been going on, and let's just kind of look here. M movement and people got on the bandwagon of the black squares and putting out their black lives matter. Yes, black lives matter, but so does other people's lives. It has to be honorable across the board. Amen. Now, was there a conversation that maybe needed to be spoken because there was a lot of dishonor towards the black race? Yes. But here's the thing. You cannot call BLM an honorable movement when you study and go out and look at what their actual, what they stood for, their platform, and, and it's all come out. And they're burning people's businesses down. And, and other black people are coming going, wait a minute, if my life mattered, why did you just burn my building down? Because they really didn't matter. It was, a, it was a movement of dishonor. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. Defund the police. Oh, really? Well, that's a real honorable thing. So what about the innocent people that have a right to law enforcement and law and order? What about the stuff that they're cramming in the schools? The, the curriculums and wanting our children to be sexually exploited at young age, that's, that's dishonor. That's not honorable to a child. It's not honorable to a parent. And parents that allow it, it's not honor. So I've been watching that the missing element of society is there is a lack of honor. The way they treat vets, the way they treated our flag, 
Oh, we're going to kneel because we've got some kind of issue with something. So now we're going to make this big statement that, you know, we are going to, to kneel in protest. Well, that's the wrong thing to protest. That's a dishonorable thing. You don't dishonor your flag that's supposed to unite you. Well, I'm not singing the national anthem. Well, you're a dishonorable person. Let's talk about social media. People are just mad. I had to say bye-bye to somebody the other day because they were yelling pretty much in all caps because we took down one of their posts and they got mad and said, I, you, you took down my first post and then they start in all caps. Now I'm asking you again. Well, I'm not obligated to answer your question if your spirit's off. And I'm not going to. You come to my page or our pages, you behave yourself or bye. I don't put up with dishonor. And I've been telling other ministers, how dare you keep the arguing, the bickering, the fighting, the division, trying to call this person out, that thing out. That's like having somebody come to your house for dinner and you let bucket mouth run their mouth in your home while you are giving them a good, honest uh, experience in your home, a great meal, and they're sitting there absolutely degrading you. This is, it's no different. If you want to create your own social media page, you do it. And you want to be a dishonorable person, then you do it on your own page. But when you go to somebody else's page, where is your honor? Social media, everybody's just mad, 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 mad. Because we are living in an honorless generation. Now look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 4. Now I want to ask you a question. Are you a Christian? How many of you are Christian? Those of you that are watching, you're Christian. Okay, so this is how you're supposed to live. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 4. Notice what Paul wrote. That everyone, yes, that means you, should know how. In other words, it ain't hard. It's simple. Should know how to possess his vessel. We all want to know how to possess somebody else, get them to do what we want. So we have these social uh, uh, outbursts of anger and criticism and you know we, we got to know everything we, we're the christian you know uh inquirer of today got to know the facts about everything somebody comes out with an accusation and immediately people believe it because we're a dishonorable generation but everyone should know how to possess themselves how in sanctification sanctification is holiness or being set apart come on we shouldn't blend in to the culture that wants us to be woke. We need to be awakened to the fact that society and our culture is absolutely trying to groom a dishonorable generation. But everyone should know how to possess themselves, their person, in sanctification and honor. Everyone. So we can see from this that there was not anybody excluded. We need to be people of honor. You say, well, Pastor Hank, what is honor? If you go back and look in the early editions of the dictionary, you would see a very, very long, not just one, but many paragraphs of the definition of honor. But it's interesting that the more you get to modern times and you get a current edition of the dictionary, what used to be long paragraphs defining honor and what honor is, today you Look in the dictionary or you type in honor and it's this nice little one sentence. Because even the very definition has been reduced. Wow. Because people have lost the understanding of what honor is. Honor is integrity. It's honesty. It's being respectful. How about this one? It's having manners. It's being polite. It's also the highest code of conduct that you wear. You put... Uh, a police uniform on, you ought to have the highest honor and code of honor that no matter who you are enforcing the law to serve and protect, it doesn't matter the color of your skin. Now, if that person has a uniform on, you are to show honor and respect to them. Isn't that right? So look at what Jesus said about our generation. Matthew chapter 11, Jesus said this in verse 15. He says, He that has an ear to hear, let him hear. But wherein to I say, what shall we liken or what shall we compare this generation? So even Jesus, back when he 
walked this earth, he had to pull back and he had to ask a question. And he had to look at the generation and say, okay, boys, I'm asking you, what should we compare this generation to? And notice what he says. He said, it's like unto the children that are in the marketplace. And he said, we've piped unto you, but you have not danced. In other words, they, they, they're unresponsive. Part of what is making our culture like it is, is we have an unresponsive, uncaring, unfeeling generation. And it's become dishonorable. It used to be that, you know, people, they, they would respond in, a, in an honorable way. Right? Now, you, you know, people just get mad. That's their first initial response is to get mad. How about this one? He said, we've mourned, but you've not lamented. In other words, there's no feelings. Have you ever noticed that with people today? Jesus said in the last days that the love of many would wax cold. Why? Because of dishonor. Right. That's right. People live in a place that dishonor governs their life. Now, I want to ask you a question. And those of you that are watching, what was the first sin that ever existed, started with Lucifer? It's the reason he got kicked out. What was the first sin? We say pride. But what motivated pride to where God said iniquity was found in Lucifer? Can I tell you what the root of it was? Dishonor. Dishonor, he thought, in the book of Isaiah chapter 14, you can read it. He said, I'm going to ascend higher than God's throne, the congregation of the north, and I'm going to be like the Most High God. Notice, I'm going to take over God. So, yeah, that might have been prideful, but what act... What was it that he was dwelling on? He was dwelling on dishonor. Dishonor was the very thing that led to pride. What causes people to act a certain way? Whether it be prideful, anger, being malicious on social media and calling people names. The root of it is dishonor. Have you ever noticed that society has become less and less honorable because... When I grew up, we used to call people by their last name. Our teachers were not Phil and Bob and Mary. It was Mrs. This, Mr. This. Our principal was never called by the first name. The pastor was never called by his first name. People that call me Hank do not get my attention. Well, you're just into pastor worship. That used to go around. Oh, they're just into pastor worship. They're posting pictures of the pastor. The pastor needs to be called pastor. Well, the user-friendly movement is to blame for that. Let's just put the pastor down on the same level of everybody else, and let's just call him, you know, Hank and Brenda and Christy and Shane and Doug, and let's just, you know, we're all equal, and let's not worship the pastor. No, there's a difference between worshiping and honoring. I don't honor, I don't worship Pastor Brenda. I honor her. I worship God. But by, here's what you have to understand. When you call me Hank, you are dishonoring what was given to me by Jesus, the Lord of the church. He gave some, not all, some, to give, be given a holy office and a holy title that was not given by their choice. I didn't call myself to be a pastor, I didn't call myself to be a, a prophetic vessel. Jesus did. So you have to learn to honor that. You would not bring President Trump in here and say, hello, Donald. I don't think that would be smart. I don't think it would be good. I don't think you should do that. I don't think you're an idiot. I think that's fake. I don't like it. Well, what if Biden came in here? Hi, Joe. Because he ain't the president. So I just thought I would... I thought I'd clarify that. I think I would. I think I should. I think I should. Listen, they raided the White House, and they raided my house, and now they're going to get raided. And God's going to restore order. There you go. So let's continue on since I'm making you nervous. Jesus talked about this honorless generation. So the first sin in heaven was dishonor 
You could call it pride. You could say iniquity. But you know how dangerous dishonor is? It leads to iniquity. Iniquity, Marilyn Hickey taught me years ago. She said, Hank, iniquity is purposeful sin. That's why Jesus said, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. You are working so at purposeful sin that Jesus said, bye. I never knew you. You, you, If you're that bent on evil, you're that bent on unrepentive, uh, absolute intentional sin, I don't know you. And so dishonor does that. It'll lead to other forms of sin. That's what it did with Lucifer. Now, what was the first recorded sin in the earth? What was it? Adam and Eve. What did they do? They ate of the forbidden fruit, right? Should have never ate that grapefruit. I wouldn't eat it anyway. We don't know if it's a grapefruit or whatever. My grandma used to always make me eat that grapefruit. Mom, your mom made me eat grapefruit. How many of you like grapefruit? That, is, that stuff is nasty, man. I mean, Grandma, couldn't you just give me an orange, you know? But no, it had to be grapefruit, and I'd be sitting there eating that stuff. I'd be like, how many of you do not like grapefruit? Yeah, look at that, Mom. Look at all that. Grandma, I know you're watching from heaven. Do you see that? But, but, but here's the point. They ate of the forbidden fruit, but what was the source? What was really at the bottom of it? What was the root? Dishonor. Because God said, look. Adam and Eve, you can eat of every tree of the field. But there is one tree, and you must honor me. Do not eat it, lest the day you dishonor, and you eat of that tree, you shall die. And what did they do? They dishonored. And dishonor has been sown into every man and woman born into the earth. Got to take it back. Look what Jesus said. Mark chapter 13, verse 12. Now, the brother shall betray brother to death. And the father shall even do that to his son. And children shall rise up against their parents. Why are children ugly and mean and nasty? Because of dishonor. In fact, listen, if you are a child or you are, if your parents are still alive, does, my mom's still here, dad's in heaven, but you know what? My job is to still honor her, and there is no age limit that after a certain age you, you quit honoring your parents. No, honor your mother and father in the Lord. Notice they didn't say be nice to them, be kind. No, honor the highest code of conduct when dealing with your parents, with your pastor, People in authority have the highest code of conduct. Be honest, be truthful, be polite, show manners, show respect. Are are you here? That it may be well with you. Why is it not well with some people? Because they don't know how to honor mom and dad. And it's jacking up their life because they're taking the same sin that was in heaven with Lucifer, the very first sin in the garden, dishonor, and they're sowing that in their life and they're wondering why they have problems. God said it. Honor your mom and dad. It'll be well with you and you'll live long. That's what he said. And look at this. They'll rise up against parents and even cause them to be put to death. Or today in this dishonorable society. Have you ever heard of this? You can divorce your parents? Are you kidding me? Man, if I tried that, my dad would be like, go ahead. Go ahead. Now get in your room. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All my dad had to do is give me that look. Mom, dad had that look. My dad was a tough dude, man. He'd just look at you. I'd be like, Look at what Paul said about the dishonorable generation. Tell me if this doesn't sound like the dishonor that we've seen in society today. But mark this down. There will be terrible times in the last days. Oh, joy. (laughs) Thanks, Paul. (laughs) People will be so dishonorable that they'll be lovers of themselves. They could care less about you. It's all about them. You know what? Just absolutely I think is the most ridiculous thing that I see. I see men do this. I see women do this. Have you ever gone to some, you really want to know what someone is like? Go to their social media page. That's why I don't even post. I don't even have a social media page, really. I just don't. I'm like, really, why waste my time? But you go to some people's social media page, and it's this. Picture to the right, a little bit over here, a little bit more to the left, higher, lower, up, down, right. Rotate and it's 600 pictures of themselves. You're in love with yourself. You are in love with yourself. 
And you can tell a lot about people. And then here, let me tell you another thing. Guys on their social media page, you know, got to show that they've, you know, got two-pack ab and they've got their shirts off. <laughs> trying to look all tough. Women out there, you know, with hardly any clothes on. They haven't let everybody see their body. they got a bikini body. Right. But they don't, they don't tell you that you use the filter lady that <laughs> skimmed you down about 30 pounds. <laughs> and then brighten your two teeth. <laughs> but you look at you in real life, you got ugly teeth. You all know what I'm talking about. Yes, you do. <laughs> Look at me. I think I'm going to create a Facebook uh, social media thing called Look at Me Book. It'll, it'll beat fake book out, I promise you. Lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, Disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, wow, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Now, here's the big one. Having a form of godliness, yeah, they all show up like the Christian, but they deny its power. Have nothing to do with these people. Wow, that's almost all your, your friends on your social media list, isn't it? Boy, you all want me to quit? Oh, okay, let's keep going because we got some stuff to get into. But look at Jesus. Let me show you something that's very powerful. Luke chapter 2, verse 46. Jesus on the, I guess you call it the, the time of the bar mitzvah, you know, when he came of age. He was 12 years of age. That's what the Bible says. But really what he was there for is he was there for to what was called his bar mitzvah. It was where he was coming of age where he would be saying... God, you are my father, and I am now accountable for my actions. That's why he said I would be, be about, didn't you know, I'd be about my father's business. This is what I'm here for, this bar mitzvah. This is what I'm here for. I'm here to show that I honor God. Now, some people say, well, I'm just honoring God when they do stupid things. You've got to honor God, but you also got to honor people. Look at what Jesus did. It came to pass three days. They found Jesus in the temple sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing and asking questions. And all that heard him were astonished and, and, and understood and under, at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said, son, why have you dealt with us? I can see Mary saying that with tears. Why have you dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought you sorrowing. Yep, there it is. And he said unto them, how is it that you sought me? Did you not know I'd be about my father's business? The first thing, if you want to have a life of honor, you've got to honor God. What's honoring God? You've got to be more concerned about God's heart, his feelings, how you're treating him. What you're doing, does he like it? He's watching. Does he approve? Does he like the way that you just talk to your spouse? Come on, teenager. Does he like the way you just talk to your parent? Does he like the way that you just yelled at that person when nobody else is around in the car and you're screaming with practical road rage and God's listening and God's watching? When you're posting that post and you've got to make your point because there's a comment section, is it honorable to God? Does it have the highest code of conduct? Notice Jesus said, I'd be about my father's business. And he, they understood not the saying which he spoke. And, and he went down with them and came to Nazareth. And notice this, he was subject unto them. So not only did he honor his heavenly father, but he honored his parents. He was subject unto them. So it's important that you don't just say, well, I'm honoring God. And then you're dishonoring people. You can't have both. You, if you really do honor God, then you will have actions that will be honorable towards other people. Because you have to understand that honor is something that is in you or not in you. Honor is of the heart. Look what Jesus said in Matthew 15. I want you to see this. Develop a heart of honor. My dad, if he taught me anything, he taught me honor. My dad told me always, you tell the truth no matter what, Hank. If you have to look square in the eye, you admit it if you did wrong. You stand for truth. Treat people right. Treat people respectfully. Have integrity. Always do what is right. My dad put that in me. Well, guess what it did? It developed in me a heart of honor. Today, I try very hard 
to treat you right, you right, people right. I try very hard to do what is honorable. Why? Because honor is in my heart. If you don't have honor in your heart, you won't be honorable. Right. You can talk it all day long. You can act like it all day long. But if it's not in your heart, if it's not really who you are, then your fruit or your actions will be dishonorable. Look at what Jesus said. People draw nigh unto me. Oh, they, they talk a good talk in this society today with their mouth. Their lips are moving. Their lips are flapping. They're keyboard warriors. And yet... They honor me, but their heart is far away from me. If your heart is not connected to God with honor, then you aren't going to have actions of honor. The more you honor God, the more you worship him and honor him, the more you make your life be about, I'm here to please God. I'm here to make sure that I never do anything that makes God mad or hurt him. And then... That will develop into your honorable actions. You'll start taking on the nature of God who's so honorable. Let's look at where we begin. Look here. Psalm 15, verse 4. There is a principle. If you want to be a, a person of honor, you've got to be at the place where no matter what, your word, your actions are your bond. If you say you're going to do something... You do it. Right? Your actions are honorable actions. You know, one thing that I've taught my boys, and I, and I taught them this for years, is when mom pulls up with groceries, they out there unloading. Mom doesn't carry the bags in. After dinner, you're up there helping out with the dishes. We have a rule in our family still today. The boys are gone, but I do all the dishes most nights, not because, uh, you know, she doesn't want to. I figured if she's out there in the kitchen making me a beautiful meal like she always does, then it's my job to show dual support and kindness. And so I, I do the dishes. But we taught our boys, however you treat your mother will be how you treat your future spouse. You are to take care of the lady. Now, did they always do that? No. They had to be reminded and kicked in the butt and, and, and all that. But I worked very hard at it. You take care of the lady. You treat her like a lady. You talk to her as a lady. You don't show anger. You don't raise your voice. You show honor. Because how you treat your mom will be how you treat your spouse. And I treat Brenda very nice. And I'm not just saying that. I treat that woman with high honor. You know what? She treats me with high honor. And that's why we have an honorable marriage. When you're all fighting like cats and dogs, you can't get along, you're trying to figure out who's right all the time, you can't ever say you're sorry. You know what we, Brenda and I do? We just, we're, 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 we both just say we're sorry. Sometimes we've had a little, uh, we call it discussion or a, what do they call it? There's a tussle. We look at each other after 33 years of marriage. Do you really want to go there? She's like, no. I'm like, neither do I. I don't want to argue. I'd win anyway. I'm right. But... Maintaining honor in your heart. You know, God told me one day, he said, that's my daughter, and I expect you to treat her right. Same thing he said to her, that's my boy. You are to treat him right. And when you sow honor to one another, you will have an honorable marriage. If all you do is just, you know, call each other names, and you don't listen to each other, and you don't talk nice to each other or about each other. Man, there used to be the, the wives club years ago, and I disbanded it. But there was a group of ladies that all they'd got together all day long. When we first started a church, we probably only had like, you know, 15 people or something, 20. And they'd all get together and hang out all day. And then their husbands would come to me and say, man, I'm out working. And, and all my wives do all day is get together. And they don't, I don't come home. The laundry's not done. The food's not done. I said, look, I'm not your policeman. I'm a pastor. But I finally had enough. And I said to the ladies, I said, is that true? Well, we, we get together for spiritual reasons and for fellowship. Well, that's great. But you're being dishonorable. You need to disband your wives club and go take care of your husbands. And they got mad and they ain't here today and I don't know what happened to them. God bless them. But look, look at Psalm 15 verse 4. Going to be honorable. Right? Do your laundry. Do his laundry if he's working for you and you're staying home all day. Don't let him come home to a pig hole. Okay? The husband's out there. 
working his butt off and he comes home and he's got to tiptoe over the dirty diapers and, the, and, and, and all the kids' toys. And, you know, when I worked, uh, when I worked, I still work, but when I worked uh, <laughs> and Brenda stayed home with Matt, I'd come home, the, mo- the lawn would be mowed, she'd have dinner ready, candles lit, my slippers, no, she didn't do that, but, but she did her side. Now, there's other times that, you know, she couldn't get this stuff. But, man, come on. Where's your honor? Where's your honor? If he's honoring the marriage, going out and working and being the breadwinner, then you need to do so. Here's another thing. Men, if your wife has the skills and the means to make more money than you, let her do it. Show some honor. Some of you men need to lose your wives. Quit controlling them. Quit being chief buffalo butt. (laughs) Hmm. Me chief buffalo butt. Me make rules. Wife cook food, make babies. I rule place. Dude, uncross your arms or I'm going to smack you. Come on. No wonder your wife's the way she is. You made her that way. I'm trying to behave myself. I really am. Look at Psalm 15. This is a sign of honor. You can put it back up. In whose eyes a vile person is contemned. What is that? Contemned. But he honors them that fear the Lord. Now here's a person of true honor. He swears to his own hurt and he changes not. I knew a friend of mine. His name is Pastor Greg Squires. Great guy. You probably heard the story. Years ago, he, he wanted a new car. And so he went in to a car lot, and there was a car salesman there and was pressing him, pressing him, pressing him, finally talked him in to uh, a, a new car. And so he said, I tell you what, he goes, I will be back tomorrow to pay for it. He really didn't want to. He just wanted the salesman off of, of his back. And so he went home, and the Lord said, um, an honorable man swears to his own hurt and doesn't change. You said you were coming back to buy that car. What are you going to do? You're going to be a person of honor? He went back, told the guy, said, you know what? I gave you my word I was going to be back, and I was going to buy this car. I really don't want this car, but I gave you my word, and I'm going to buy it. And he said it it was the best car he had ever owned because honor was attached to it. Come on, think about how many times. Think about how many times. Oh, pastor, I'll serve in the church. You still ain't serving. You still ain't done anything with your talent or your gift, yet we need you. We say things out of our mouth. Used to be, you ever, how many of you ever bought a house? And you're there for like six hours of signing, you know, right? The mortgage. And so one day when we bought our first house, I said to the lady, I said, um, why is that thing like six foot by six foot by five foot, the stack of papers? She goes, oh, those are all lawsuits that they had to write into a mortgage contract. Couldn't be, hey. You're going to pay your bills? Yes. We'll give you the money. You pay your bills. <laughs> Deal. That's the way it was back in, how many of you older people remember? That was like the way it was in 1930, 1925, 1915, those kind of era. You know, they used to just shake hands on everything. Now everything's got to be, you know, contracts. You know, when people in the church tell me that they're going into business together, I always go, oh, God. Oh, God. I can say that after 25 years of pastoring, most of their business adventures and endeavors where they work together only last until somebody gets ticked off because they didn't get their fair cut. And they said this, and they said that, and they said this. And so I say, if you're going to go into business together, put a contract on it, get a couple of lawyers. Or don't do it. Because people can't keep their word anymore. You, you like my word? Okay. Look here, people all out to try to get rich. Look at what Proverbs 22 verse 1 says. This is the most important thing. Do you know that when we all go to our grave and old age and people stand over your gravestone, they're going to look at something on that gravestone. They're going to look at your name. And it's either going to signal to them that you were and are an honorable, good person, or it's going to say, I'm glad you're gone. Come on. There's some people that you've been over their graves or you've looked at them and said, I'm glad they're gone. 
But there's other ones you weep over because they were so good. And what they brought to society and to culture and to the kingdom of God was so honorable. Because there's something that is attached to your name, whether you like it or not. It's either honor or dishonor. Come on, what are you like as a person? If I look at you and I call your name, do people automatically say, hey, that's an honorable person? If I say Mike, people automatically go, that's an honorable, you are an honorable man, by the way. People go, that is an honorable man. Okay? But it says a good name is to be chosen more so than to get rich. Your name is more important than your stuff. A good name is better than great riches. Now, think about it. You go, how many of you, we have some pregnant women in here. How many of you women are getting ready to have a baby? Raise your hand. We had one couple that the Lord called out. They told me this at the book signing. Are they here today? And... There, yes, stand up for just a moment. So we said, you, you are unable to have children, correct? And the Lord said, you're going to have children. And God even spoke, I'm not sure in that prophecy about twins. Maybe he did. But they are pregnant now. God did it with twins. Amen. But you can go ahead and be seated. They don't look in the baby's book of names. and go, what are we going to call our kid? Uh, let's call it Lucifer. <laughs> let's call it Osama. Let's call it Obama. Let's call it Hillary. No, there's some nice Hillarys out there. There are. There are. I think they're totally terrific Hillarys out there. I think they're terrific. But you don't go, oh, Jezebel. Oh, that's such a beautiful name for a girl. No. Mary. Noah, yeah. Yeah. Doug, <laughs> right? Wally, <laughs> right? Donald. See, somebody just clicked me off. But no, you go for the names that have honor to it, right? You go for biblical names. You don't pick out the, 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 the you know, Absalom. I've never met an Absalom. I've never met a Korah. Never met Jezebel. Only in the spirit. <laughs> so your name has something to do with you, whether you're a person of honor. And if you have a business, your name is either associated with honor or dishonor. You know, one of the things that I am just ready to be just done with, so we've had some projects going on at my house, but we've also had projects going on here in the church, is contractors. Oh, contractor. If you're a contractor, listen to me carefully. It's not so much the work that the contractors do. It's their dishonor. They tell you they're going to be there, and then they're not. They tell you they're going to do something. They don't. They tell you it's going to cost a certain amount, and it doesn't. And, and I'm just ready. I'm like, is this really? You wonder why? I'm wondering why you're still in business. And if any of you contractors are watching me, I'm wondering why you're in business. I really am. Because they never do what they say. They never show up on time. Then they keep the job site looking a certain way. And I, I have three German shepherds and I keep an immaculate house. Why? Because I honor my wife. She honors me and we work together to keep an immaculate house, especially with three German shepherds. I don't want my house smelling like dogs. And when it looking like we have dogs. Right. Somebody's saying, right, right. Because you've been in those houses where you know they had dogs. And it smells like they have dogs. And it looks like they have dogs. And you can tell they have dogs because you stepped in it in the living room. Yeah, one of those. Or how about you cat lovers? Okay, you invite somebody over. Okay, can I tell you a secret? Okay, can I tell you a secret? Okay. Okay, my name is Hank. I'm going to tell you a secret. <laughs> Do you know I know the day, I know the day that I quit going to people's houses for dinner. I know the day. And I know the day when I quit doing pot blessing dinners at the church. I know the day. I know the day. I, I totally know the day. So I went to these people's house for dinner. They don't go here anymore. They're both in heaven. And I went over there and... 
we're eating ribs. And the cat jumps up on the counter and starts licking the ribs. That's why cats don't go to heaven. They are evil, evil, evil. <laughs> so this cat is licking the ribs. I'm like. And then it jumps down into the cat box, which is right next to where I'm sitting. With the cat box Charlie things looking at me. And it goes. And they bring the ribs out. And I'm eating the ribs, and I'm like, pulling the bone out and hair. And I said, Brenda, mark it down. I will never go to anybody's house anymore, so don't get offended. Somebody ruined it. I'm sorry. It was a real catastrophe. Real catastrophe. And the same way with pot blessing. Man, I'm, I'm you know, eating my pot blessing meal, and all of a sudden I'm like, And it's a long piece of hair. And it's an animal hair. I know. And so I just took it and started going like this. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, so notice how we always cater. Because if we find a dog hair or an animal hair or a person's hair, we're going to take it up with the caterer. I mean, it would be really bad if, all right, who's back in cheese is this? It's my pastor, Hank. But what's with all the hair in there? See, it would, just wouldn't go over very well. <laughs> but I could say to the restaurant, we found hair in the food, right? All right, last one. All right. <laughs> Pastor Doug, come up here. <laughs> please. Piano person, come up here, please. <laughs> okay. So I want to I wanna, I wanna give you a scripture that is just so profound. Okay. So how many of you and you that are watching ever, ever quoted this scripture here? 3 John, verse 2. All right? You know which one it is? I wish above all that you prosper. You're in soul prospers. Right? And that you're in what? Good health. All right. Why aren't people prospering? Why isn't their soul prospering? And why aren't they in good health? Now, not always. But people quote this and they don't realize there was, there was a reason that John was writing to his children and saying, hey, I wish above all. He was talking to a particular individual. And he said, I wish above all, man, that you prosper. And that your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions prosper. And I wish above all that you even be in good health. Okay, look at 3, uh, 3 John verse uh, 1. You got to look at verse 1. Who is he talking to? The elder unto the well-beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Verse 2, thank you for playing it because you're going to make me sound really good. <laughs> Beloved, I pray above all things that you prosper, that you're in health, Gaius, even your soul would prosper. Who's he talking to? Gaius. Now, why did he wish this and pray this? It's because of who Gaius was. He was an honorable person. Watch. For I rejoice greatly when other Christians came and testified of the truth. That word truth is also honor. They testified of the honor that is in you. Even as you walk in honor, he's going, man, you walk in so much honor. Man, my prayer for you is that you prosper, your soul prospers, and that you're in good health. Come on, why are some people not prospering? Because they have dishonorable means. Why are some people not in health? Because you have brought something on your body, perhaps, through dishonor. Come on, the Bible says bitterness is the root. Even gets down into the person's bones, it says. Right? Honor is so powerful, it keeps sickness away. Causes the blessing to come to you. You're not having to worry about what you said to somebody because you only tell the truth. That's why you have a sound mind or your soul prospers. Now watch this. Look at verse 4, and then we're done. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in honor. Come on, that's what I want. I want a church of honor. I want to be pastors of honor. Now, look here at verse 9. There is one dude, he said, I wrote unto the church, but Diotrephus, who loves to have the preeminence among them, doesn't receive us. Wherefore, if I come, I'll remember his deeds which he's done. He prays around with malicious words. That's why I don't do it on Facebook. 
and not content therewith. Yeah, you're not content. You always got to be brother, big mouth, blabber mouth, sister, whatever. Right? You live your life in a rage. Neither does he himself receive the brethren and forbids them that would and casts them out of the church. He's saying, look, this man, I ain't praying for him to prosper. I'm not praying for his soul to prosper. I'm not even praying for him to be in good health because he has so much dishonor and is coming out with his malicious spirit. But notice who he prayed for and the benefits of what honor does. You'll be in health. Come on, stand on your feet. You'll have a good soul or a healthy soul. And man, you will live in the blessing. This is what, this is what I just want to encourage you. And I know I've been pretty tough.